stitching friends. It is going to be Sunday when I'm posting this project. I'm hoping to start a new segment here on YouTube for you called Sunday Stitches where we just hang out, we chill, and we stitch. And maybe we chat, put on a little light music, and we just work on a project together. So grab whatever project you're working on or if you just kind of want to work on some whatever you got going on, folding your laundry, uh, making meal prepping for the week, or maybe you just have other projects. Grab your paints, grab your colored pencils, whatever it is you want to work on, and we'll just sit and chat and work on a project together. Today I am going to be working on a little bookmark. So this is a little page corner. Sometimes you see them made with cardboard in the back, but I like making mine felt on both sides. So I'm going to be stitching up something that looks similar to this, probably different colors, but we're going to be doing florals and a bookmark, and we'll hand bind the edges as well. Uh, theoretically we could do that by sewing machine, but I think we'll just keep with the same project and we'll work on it. I am in my living room. This is a different setting. I'm actually in my dining room, but behind me is my living room. And um, my husband Nick is gaming tonight and he is chit chatting up there. So I just wanted a nice quiet space where we could work. Personally, I have grabbed some hot water. I put in one of those vitamin C packets because my entire town is coming down with different stomach bugs and uh, different things. So I'm just making sure I have vitamin C in me. Uh, but grab your favorite tea, hot cocoa, coffee, whatever you like. I also have my water, lots of water, uh, to stay hydrated because I don't drink enough water during the day. So apparently I'm gonna try to keep it next to me so I can keep working. And then I've got my supplies down here and I'll probably pop in throughout the project. You'll probably hear my voice, but I'm probably going to be mostly showing you what I'm working on. Does that sound good? That sound okay? So we'll go ahead and we will jump right in. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome to my dining room table. I usually have these really neat and tidy videos that I make for you, but today we are just going to work the way that I normally work, which is fairly messy. Um, I have all of my floss in here. I have it organized by color, but then if I'm like mid-project anywhere, you can see like this is a mix of colors. I tend to keep those colors together so I can come back to them if I'm working on a project. Right now I'm filming a class for Skillshare on how to use water-soluble paper to embroider on knit hats. So this is the palette that I'm using for that project. So I'm going to keep these here. And these were left over from a workshop and some other past projects. But you can see I've got all of my colors here. We'll probably be working through those. I have a few extra needles and a pin cushion with even more if we need them. Plus I have an entire stack of bookmarks. Maybe someday we'll do some like flat bookmarks. Maybe we can like make little like page... I don't know, page like holders that go like over the top. We'll see. Because the corners are nice, but I sometimes think they can get a little bit bulky. I don't know what you think, but. And we have a few that like I've started. At one point I was playing around with different birds and things, but I think we're just gonna start fresh. And when I don't know what I'm working on, I don't know what project I wanna do, my go to tends to be florals. Although these bumblebees are really cute. I don't know, if you guys want to see bumblebees one day, let me know and I will show you how to make these really cute bumblebees. But for today, I think we're gonna just stick with. A basic floral. I don't have, this is a wool felt and I don't know how much more of that I have. Um, this other felt, I guess I have a little bit here, but I think we're just going to use felt. This is felt that I just got at Michael's at the craft store. So you can just get this felt right at the craft store. The only thing that you're going to see that's different is some of them I've put paper on the back as a stabilizer, but I'm not going to use those ones for today's project. I'm actually going to stabilize afterward to cover up the stitches so that it slides on the book easier. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, but what color do we want to use? I kind of like the cream. I know, is that boring? There's a snowstorm outside right now, so I'm kind of feeling like neutrals might be a good way to go. And then we'll put some bright florals on it. I don't know why I'm vibing that. Maybe I'm feeling Joanna Gaines inspired. I'm not sure, but I think we're going to do just a nice neutral one today. And we can always add some fun colors later on. If you want to work alongside me, by all means, this is just, it's a triangle. It's actually a right triangle. You're going to need it to be, oh, I think this was, let's see, one, like three inches, three inches or so, three and a quarter inches uh, length width, but do it to whatever size works for you, depending on how you like to read. I also, and I just cut two of them. They're at a 90 degree angle. So this is a perfect 90, well, as perfect as I can cut it, but it's a 90 degree angle. You're just going to need two triangles. We're only going to sew through one of them, and then you are going to, we're going to be stitching them together. And again, I'll show you how that works. 
what colors do we want on this? I think we kind of want to go like maybe periwinkly today. Yeah, that's really pretty. Uh, what colors? And then maybe we can go like mauvey. We're gonna want something light and a little bit of something darker. Is this too light? That's kind of pretty. Do we like that? And then we're gonna want a color that's gonna kind of pop a little bit. And I think maybe we'll go like a golden direction. Meh, not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, maybe we need something a bit more bronzy to kind of... Be... No, too much, too much, too much. Maybe, I don't know, what colors? What colors do you see here that you think would go? Let me know in the comments and then next time maybe I will do a better job selecting what colors I think we should use. I think this is a lot. It would have to be like a really small amount if we were gonna go like a really goldeny tone. But I kinda want a color that's gonna pop a little bit. I was hoping for a neutral. Eh, I think these browns are just too dark. They're just too dark. Hmm. I could go a deeper, darker blue. That's pretty. Okay. I think that's a little bit better. So we've got a navy, kind of a periwinkly color, a deeper mauve. The only other color that's too much. It's very, very peachy. I could borrow from in here, though, if we need to. That's kind of pretty, too. Maybe this is blue. Maybe this blue is the problem. Oh, I think this blue is too dark. We do like sage. We like these sagey colors in here. This is the same color. That's pretty. That's really pretty. What about... Oh, I don't hate that. Okay, guys. I changed my mind. I know I said we were going to do periwinkle. But I think I've changed my mind. And this is the color that we're actually going to go with. Do we like this? Is this too dark? Just slightly. It's the same color. It's the exact same color. I think if we just use it in very, very sparing amounts, it has like a pinky purpley undertone to it. I think it's going to wind up really pretty. Okay. We're going to roll with this, friends. Let's see what we're up to. So normally when you're sewing, you're going to want to use a hoop, but I am not going to be stitching too tight. This is pretty thick material. It can kind of stand on its own which means it has a lot of support. So as long as we're not gonna be pulling our floss too tight, we'll be okay. And I think in order to get something similar to this one, because I don't wanna think too hard, it's we're snow daying it up over here. I've got, uh, did I show you this? I have my blanket on, please hold. Okay, and I didn't really show you this last time, but in addition to my cozy drinks, I also have my cozy blanket and I have fuzzy socks on and I have my cozy comforter that's like this big soft yarn. Get comfy, y'all. Like, let's, seriously, this is gonna be a cozy stitching day. I don't know about you, but it is storming up here in New York, so the snow just started. We're not expecting a huge storm, maybe, I think they said six to 10 inches, depending on where the bands fall, we might get a little bit more, a little bit less. Yeah, so get comfy, get a cup of something warm if you want something warm. I am gonna be sipping on my hot water tea. And we'll go ahead and we will start stitching. Okay, so this is kind of our inspiration. We'll do something similar to this. We'll start with a big rosette in the center, and I think we're gonna make that our, I think I'm actually gonna go with our darkest pink for that, so because it's really standing out and it's really pretty. So let's get that started. And I'm gonna use all six strands. I'm gonna grab, these are my favorite scissors. I have these in a couple different colors. I've gotta get them sharpened soon, or I think my dad has some sharpening tools I might borrow to see if we can get that sharpened, but yeah. I'm gonna use all six strands because I want this rosette to go fast and actually I may, so here's the scoop. Basically, if you're using six strands, you can leave the floss as is or you can separate the strands out and then recombine them and it gives you just a little bit more volume. I would like to fill this rosette faster rather than slower, so we are gonna separate and then recombine. I don't know, can you see that okay? There we go. Okay, so we've separated most of the strands, but we're keeping it casual today, friends. What is everyone else working on? Are you all getting snow where you are? Let me know. Is it just us that's getting snow? I know. So I'm in New York. I'm not in the city. I'm in upstate. I'm 
between Buffalo and Albany, and I'm upstate New York, and um, I know that that's a really big span, but you get the idea. I am not in New York City. I'm about four, four and a half hours away from New York City, so up here we tend to get a little bit more snow, but I think this storm is coming from the south, so... I, don't know, I heard nor northeast, we call those nor'easters, which we tend to get pummeled with snow. But the way that New York is kind of set up, and I am, y'all, I am not a meteorologist, so don't quote me, but we have a lot of bodies of water, right? So we have the Atlantic Ocean to the east, and then we have Great Lakes to the west. So we can get snow from a lot of different directions up here. And so wintertime tends to be pretty snowy, but if you are in a place that gets a little bit less snow, let me know, like shout it out. I would love to hear about your winter experience. Okay, round two. Okay, so again, tell me about snow days. Did you have snow days growing up? Here in the United States, when there's an abundance of snow, sometimes like in school, you'd get the day off because, well, there was a ton of snow and it was hard to clear the roadways and it was safer for everybody to stay home. And now I feel like every now and then we'll get a snowstorm that's abundant. But back in the day, am I, am I imagining it? We used to get a ton and I mean a ton of snow, like a lot, like the snow banks were always over my head and granted I was a kid. So maybe the snowbanks were the same height as like they were and because I was a kid it felt like they were just huge but I, I swear we used to get more snow and we would so if it was an outside day where we could like play outside and it, the weather wasn't too catastrophic we would we would go to the local sledding hills we had my my house had a small hill in the backyard, but sometimes my parents would bring me over to the local, am I good now? Yeah, okay, that looks great. Uh, to the local golf course. I know golf course, right? But it had hills because where the, I don't know, I'm not really a golfer, but like I think they're called sand pits, where the sand pits were. There were these like really steep and deep mini hills. And so we would go tubing or sledding down those hills. And it was a ton of fun. Uh, and when I was a little bit older, my parents would take me cross-country skiing at that same golf course because there was trails and just pathways going from basically hole to hole. But you couldn't tell it was hole to hole because there was snow everywhere. And I was that kid who like felt like it was downhill skiing, even though it totally wasn't. It was totally mostly flat. Like there was a couple trails between holes that like had small hills and I would like down them like I was the coolest kid ever. And I have been downhill skiing since. And let me tell you, it is, I, I get scared. Like I actually get scared at the top of these like mountains because it is so high. Like from the bottom of the hill or the ski hill, you're like, oh yeah, no big deal. I can come down that. And then like when I get up there, y'all, like and look over the edge, I'm like, wow, this is, this is high. This is a lot for me. And it's just not my, it's just not my fave. I think I would do cross-country skiing a little bit more than I would do downhill skiing. I like the idea of downhill skiing, but just like, like it sounds romantic, right? Like it sounds like it would be like the perfect snowy day, but just, I just don't like the height. I like the idea of sitting in like, what's it called? The chalet, like where you can just have some like hot cocoa or like hot tea and read a book. That sounds like a good time to me. But um, when I say read a book, that also sounds like a romantic idea because I'm not sure I've really picked up like an official hard copy book in a long time. I mean, like cookbooks. I have books. I have piles of books that I want to read. But I've just, it feels like a luxury to actually stop and read a book right now. I feel like life is just so busy. I do audiobooks. I love audiobooks because I feel like I can multitask. So I can be listening to something while I'm stitching or working. My go-to is, I'm a millennial, so obviously I love Harry Potter. Any other Harry Potter fans out there? And I like Harry Potter because I've listened to it, or, well, okay, let's be real. I read it first, right? So I read it, and I know the storylines, so if I am working and I need to, like, concentrate on my stitches or what I'm working on, 
and I lose track of what's happening in the book, I can pick right back up and know like what's happening in the plot without having to backtrack my book. But I would like some additional books. I've read some like small businessy type books. I've read a few like chill, you know, lady novels. But I'd love if you guys have some recommendations. I'm open to fantasy. Uh, I like, you know, a little bit of mystery. I'm okay with some, um, you know, romance books are okay. Let me know what y'all are reading. If there's anything good I should be adding to my collection. I also love podcasts. So if anyone has any good podcasts they want to drop below, I always love a good podcast. I like a good like 45 minute hour long session where I feel like I can chit chat with someone. I work alone so often that it's nice to actually feel like I, you know, with a podcast, it's like I have someone else there working with me. <laughs> Is that silly? Does anyone else? Does anyone else get that? Well, anyway, we're getting close on this rosette. I'm going to start um, peeling the edges soon. I might need to be able to run through the end of this floss. And then when I bring up the new set of floss, I will probably, I will probably add a little bit more. This rosette's a little bit smaller than the other one, but I'm okay with that. I don't think that's such a big deal. We can add some other things or an, another rosette or two to fill in some of the other gaps. What we do want to do is we want to leave a little bit of space along the edge for our, for our side stitches. So you can see we need to like not, oh, I drop everything. You can see I don't want to get too close to the edge. So we got to leave a little bit of gap so that we can add those other stitches right through. Okay. And if there's certain things you want to know about, let me know. I can always chit chat with you or if you drop something in the comments or I'm going to try to do this weekly. So if there's a topic you want me to talk about, let me know. I'm happy to discuss while we're working. Because if you're anything like me, it's nice to have another person while, you know, talking while you're working. Okay, we're going to knot this off here. I know some embroiderers don't tie knots, but I do. So the key is when we're working on a woven wheel, not to like pull too tight when we are knotting. And I'm actually going to use my needle to make sure that this stays at the bottom without me pulling it too hard. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, happy with that so far. We're going to do just a little bit more though. Something I've thought about, I always get these little extra strands at the end and it feels like such a waste. And I've seen a few artists actually collect them and keep them in little jars and then use them on a fiber art project, you know, when they have enough. And I think I might try that this year. I might need to get, this is like that moment when I'm regretting, you know how like you just, I don't know about you, but like you hoard things like little boxes or little jars, like I'll use them someday. This would be the moment I need those little jars and I'm sure I did not save them. You know, like little jam jars or something. I'm going to have to go look and see if I have saved any little jam jars because then I can sort by color. You know what I mean? And I can put, see, when you tie a knot too tight, you see how this one kind of overlapped a little bit? And it's fine. No one's going to notice. Probably no one would have noticed if I hadn't said anything. Okay, that's a little better. Well, we're going to round that out anyway, so... Let's, let's pop up like right here and then we'll start to just round out these edges just a little bit, making it a little bit bigger. Okay, so back to jam jars. Um, does anyone else have recommendations for ways to store or ways that I can use the extra little bits? Because I, throwing them out, I know, I'm the craft hoarder, right? Like everyone does this, like, hate to have the waste and it always feels like you can come up with a project for something, but... I really feel like this is actually something that we can, we can, we can do. We can, we can make something fun out of this. Maybe at the end of the year, we can save up all of our little bits and I will try to think of a really fun craft project that we can use them on. I am just going to have to find some jam jars. <laughs> I'm sure I have some. I just... I, I don't know where they'd be and there's a chance that I had do you ever have like those moments where you're like I'm gonna clean and I'm gonna like hardcore clean and I'm not saving anything anymore and you wind up wiping out all the stuff that you had saved for so long yeah so I there's a chance I did that and 
I'm going to probably regret <laughs> regret it because this is the moment where I'm like, wow, I really could have used that. But I'll go look and see at some point. I'll, I'll keep you posted if if I come across any. Hopefully, hopefully I will. I, and like at some point, mason jars were super popular, I swear. So I was a florist. I don't know how many of you know this, but I did a lot of floral design work and mason jars were being used in almost every, every wedding. Um, they had they had a really hot moment there for oh I'd say at least five six years I'd say mason jars were the hot wedding item. Uh, I definitely saved a bunch of mason jars at my wedding. I had wine bottles and mason jars and like those eclectic different jars for centerpieces to have all different kinds of flowers and foliage and greenery and texture and. But I don't know if I saved any of them. That was that was 2018. So that was like, well, it'll be six years in the summer. So five and a half years at this point. Probably good that I, I don't hoard every little item. Okay. Do we, we like this? Is this a nice size? Are we happy with the shape? There's a couple interesting spots in there, but are we kind of, we're kind of good with that, right? Okay, so I'm going to tie this off. We do have some extra. Theoretically, I can use this for French knots or something as we move along with the project. Let's do our daisies. I think we're going to use... I want to use this bright pink again for... We're going to use it. We're going to use it for where our daisy knots are going to be. So, you know what? Let's make the daisies first and we'll come back and make the knots. I think the daisies... We'll make our daisies in the lighter pink. We'll see if it shows up. I'm going to use, I wouldn't normally use six strands for Daisy, but it's almost the same color. It's like really close. The color is really, really close here. Let me turn down the light again. Okay, so the color is really, really close, right? So I want to make sure that it's going to have at least some dimension if it doesn't totally stand out. And I don't think I'm going to separate the strands this time because I kind of want the daisies to hold their linear shape. So I want these lines to not be loosey-goosey. I want them to stay as like tight, thick lines. Is that a thing? I don't want them to be quite as full. So I'm not going to separate the strands. And I know on the rosette, that second strand, I technically didn't separate, but I think it came out just fine. It came out, came out really nice. So for your daisies, if you want to do two or three strands, it's totally cool. I I like dimensions, so I tend to work a little bit thicker, a little bit bulkier, but again, your style choices are totally up to you. And let's see. So we want to put it, looks like we want to stick a daisy maybe up here. Okay. And... Okay. So what are the current wedding trends? Is anyone getting married soon? What is, I'm kind of out of touch. I haven't been in the wedding world in, oh, since 2020. It's, I, I stopped doing most of my floral work in 2020. So I, I mean, I see like reels on Instagram and Facebook with like some of the trends just because I, I like those things. I like seeing what designs are popular. I like seeing how people are celebrating and spending those times as family, but what are the current, what are the current trends? Like, what are people super into these days? Are they, I don't think mason jars are in quite so much. Are, is, like the, is the eclectic, like, um, like secondhand jars and things, is that still kind of trending around? I know it was popular, well, I don't know if it was popular when I got married, but it was something that I did, um, it's kind of a big, I don't think we like that, that location. We're going to, we're going to come out from that. Sorry, multitasking. Anyone else talk to themselves while they're sewing? Just me. Okay. So yeah, this is a little far out. We're going to, we're going to pull this back a little bit. I need to get my strands off. I think there's like a nick in my nail. I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to do up my nails because it keeps getting caught on my on my thread. Good reason to keep your nails all. Oh my Atlanta. 
I definitely need to get these scissors sharpened. Please work. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'll make that. I'll put that on my list for this upcoming week. My dad said he had like a sharpening like stone or something. So we'll, maybe I'll try that in worst case. I did see a listing. Someone said that they were sharpening scissors. Maybe I'll see if I can pull that up and see how hard it is. I know it's, you know, like you ever have those tasks where it's really not going to take you that long to work on it, but you put it off and you put it off because it feels like a lot, even though it's really not a lot. I feel like, and like once it's done, you're going to feel good because these scissors are going to be sharp. Does anyone else have like projects like that? Just me. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, this Daisy has some character. Pfft, what on earth? <laughs> And there we go. Okay. I'm going to kind of zhuzh this out a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. This side too. Okay. That's an okay daisy. We're going to put a little knot in. Back here. Don't, I'm going to cover up all these stitches, so not to worry. No one's going to... Hopefully notice that they're there. We're also going to put a little bit of paper on the back so that you're less likely to get caught on the knots and the bumps on the back of the project as you're using this for your books. You know what I miss? You know, like the cool thing, it's like always, not even just cool thing, it just felt good to go into like a bookstore, you know what I mean? Like we had this Barnes and Noble uh, a couple towns away when I was growing up and had a, had like a Starbucks in there, not that I necessarily love Starbucks drinks. I was at the age where like I would order the drinks that are basically like milkshakes. But then we also had like local bookstores with local owners and you'd go in there and it was like magical. Like, I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? It was I remember there being book releases and the bookshop owner would theme the store to match the book release. You'd have like book release parties. How cool is that? So one day when I was growing up, Harry Potter was being released and I was so excited to pick up, it was the fourth book. And I remember it was the fourth book because she had Tan Tung Taffy and I had no idea what Tan Tung Taffy was until I read the book and realized that Fred and George were up to some hijinks and they were starting Weasley's, Wizard Wheezies. But like, how cool is that? Like she themed the whole store around the book. It's, you know, finding really cool bookshops that do those sorts of things these days is tricky. And I always loved getting like the hardcover copies. It just made me feel so special. They were always more expensive, so I'd also have to get the paper copies. But like when you could get a hardcover copy, you know what I mean? Like why are books so magical like that? Like I wish I had more time to read them and just sit. I, okay, that's a lie. I have the time. I need to make more time for it and like actually set aside time in my day because the time exists. I'm just you allocating it differently and I think maybe this year we will put a little bit more balance into slowing down instead of me scrolling on my phone for hours at the end of the day maybe I'll I'll spend an hour reading and opening up a new book and getting wrapped up into a different world and seeing a new perspective because I think it's just so important and then I can use this cute little corner page marker that we are making right now and that we are stitching up what do you think that seemed like a good, a good plan. Okay, we got two daisies done. And we'll tie this one off and we'll do a few more. Okay, we'll thread our needle so we can do a couple more daisies. Intermittently, we'll put one over here this time. Yeah. 
Sometimes when I'm making my daisies, I will leave the petals just a little bit loosey-goosey so they look fuller. You can kind of see on this one, I left them a little bit wider. Theoretically, you could like pin them down and tack them down in two places, but sometimes if you just leave them loosey-goosey, it kind of looks cute too. Okay, so let's do, let's do this. Does anyone else just make up stitching as they go? This is not like a pattern. We're just, we're just kind of stitching what feels right. And I think, I think there's no right or wrong here. Like we're just kind of free flow stitching right now. And the only one that does this, I feel like I used to do this as a kid too with my quilting. So I got into what's called like crazy quilting, or art quilting. I like free, um, free motion stitching. I like raw edge app. Oh my God. I love raw, raw edge applique. like fabric collage. I love fabric collage. It's my jam. Just kind of like coloring with fabric, you know, painting with fabric. I like the textures and I like playing with the prints and seeing what we can make, turn something into something else or kind of build on the color and, and make something even more wild and different and fun. I don't know. Tell me what your favorite hobby is. Are you, are you here working on another project? Are you, are you painting? Are you sewing with me? Are you... Uh, are you just doing office work? Laundry folding? What's your Sunday looking like today? Like what's, what are we up to? Are you catching this on a Sunday? Are you catching this during the week? Let me know. I, I'm curious. Yeah, let's, let's, let's be friends. Like what, what you got going on? Tell me about your projects. I want to hear all about them. I think sharing some of this is really fun and really cool. Now this in person, you can kind of see... I don't know if you can see. You can see the coloring. It is there. I may wind up adding some metallic to those just to kind of keep it even more exciting. I'll show you how, how we would do that. I want just like a touch more contrast, but not anything exceptional. So I may wind up adding just a little bit more. I might wind up adding a little bit of metallic just for giggles. I don't know if I can do anything with this bit, but we're gonna we're gonna try. I might do like a little partial, partial daisy. I think down at the bottom, there's not a ton of space down here, but I want to add like a little something. So I maybe I'll add like a little, oh, you know, we can start one here and I bet we'd be okay. So this bottom edge is going to be kind of, it's going to be empty. So we don't have to worry about getting too close to this edge. We'll be fine. Ooh, I sewed right through y'all. You sew through a knot, it's gonna pull it. So we're gonna just pull that back up. It's no big deal, we can catch it. And we're gonna put our first loop right here. Yeah, that's a good spot. Boom. Yeah, we like that, don't we? Okay. We'll tack that down and then I'll tie a knot and we'll get a little bit more floss. I should have gotten more to begin with, but I... We're chilling today. We're not over planning today. Today is not a day to over plan. Today is a day to relax and just enjoy creating. I think sometimes I have my best projects when I'm not thinking too hard about them, when I'm just letting it flow. I'm not overthinking it and just, you know, just getting into that creative zone. Okay, so we're going to finish off this daisy right here. I'm going to little bit more floss. I know that wasn't the best way to unwind a bobbin, but that's okay. No big. No big deal. Okay. This tail is too big. It's going to show out the bottom if we're not careful. There we go. I get a sip, everyone. Reminder: Don't forget about your warm beverage. Don't let it get too cold. Sometimes I get chit chatting and I forget. I get working and I forget I had 
a warm drink to begin with. And by the time I remember it again, it's, well, it's not warm anymore. I've seen that they have those new little, like, desk heaters. But I'm kind of, like, scared of them. I'm scared. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be nervous about it. Y'all let me know. Have you ever, have y'all ever used one of those? Are they worth it? I've seen, I don't know. I'm worried that like, I don't know, I guess fire hazard. It's probably not, but I'm a nervous Nelly. I have, I get anxious anyway. So I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Okay. I'm kind of happy with this for right now. Um, I kind of want to put one more here. I might put like a little one over on this side. <laughs> you know what we can do? Maybe I'll put another little rosette over here because I, I can't, I'm kind of done with the daisies. I think we're daisied out right now. We'll put in another small rosette and then we'll just add some, some, some cute little touches. Do we want to... Okay, let me put the centers in and I think I can get at least... One French knot out of this guy. I don't need all six for a French knot. We're gonna use three strands for a French knot. Let's see how we do with that. And then you maybe we'll add some metallic. I don't know. Let's see how this, how this pans out here. Okay. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna do one, two, three. Little knot. Hi, Ellie. Ellie's coming over to say hi, so she might try to... Yep, she's drying my hand. Hi, Bubba. You're okay, girlfriend. You're okay. Well, everyone, Ellie's trying to say hi. Oh, so Ellie's climbing on top of me, but um, I'm guessing my microphone is muffled. You probably can't even hear me. But Ellie's here, and she's bumping me around. But she just wants some lovies. She just wants some love. Why don't you take a little nap, girlfriend? Can you take a little nap? Little take a little nap? No? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, all done. All done. You're not done. Okay, she's not done. Okay, you have to go outside. You have to go potty. Okay, we're taking a potty break. I'll be back in just a few and then we'll keep going. Maybe I'll get a couple shots of the storm so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, but then we'll be back and we'll be sewing. Real quick, real quick break, real quick. Okay, so you can see the snow is starting to fall. There's Ellie all the way out there. She's chasing things, but yes. Snow's starting to come down. We don't have that much yet. We only have like an inch or two, but it's starting. It's starting up. It's supposed to be snowing like all night. <sighs> I'm happy that we are going to be inside as soon as Ellie's all done out here. She's done doing a full sniff of the yard. We're going to go back in and get cozy again. So reheat your teas or your coffee or your hot cocoa or whatever you have. Keep stitching and we'll be right back at it. Oh, she is barking. Good times. We'll be right back at it really shortly. Okay, so I'm back in sewing that being outside with Ellie in the cold, though, kind of reminded me of when, when I was little, we, the very first dog I ever had, uh, her name was Sarah. She was a German short hair pointer and I, I was in kindergarten, so I don't remember all of the details, but I do know that we, we got Sarah, we brought her home during cold months and she was a puppy. So she had to be house trained, you know, to go do her business outside. And it was, it was cold outside. So somehow in, in the training process, Sarah came to know the phrase, hurry up <laughs> as her, like go outside to do business. Like, you know, like command, like that was the phrase that she knew that meant, okay, it's time to go outside to do my business because it was so cold. I think, you know, me and my parents and whoever, we'd be standing out there with her and it was freezing. We'd be like, okay, hurry up. It's, <laughs> it's time. You know, we want to go back in, hurry up. And we must've said, hurry up so much that somehow she, she took that to like mean, okay, I guess it's time to be outside and doing my thing now. So yeah, good, 
Good times, friends. So for all of you that have adopted a uh, a puppy in the cold months, I uh, yeah, I got a chuckle out of that every time I think about it. The number of times we must have told that poor dog to please to please hurry up because it was so cold outside and we were we were house training. We didn't want her to go inside the house. Uh, yep. So she came to know that phrase. <laughs> I'll do your business outside. Okay, it's coming along. You kind of see it. Nice. Okay, beautiful. Next time I might pick some colors so that you can see them a little bit better on camera. But I do like these tone on tones. They're coming okay. You can hear Ellie playing in the background. I'm sorry. So if you hear her thumping around, she's she's playing with her toy. So Ellie's a lab. She needs a lot of playtime. She's very smart though. She knows how to pick up her toys and bring them to me and. Oh, that's, you want to play the football? Okay, okay, drop it. She brought me this, so we're going to try tossing this. And hopefully that will keep herself occupied for a bit. I thought she was going to bring me one of her ones where she gets F-O-O-D. She knows words, so I have to be careful which ones I say or she's going to, she's going to know. Okay, looks like she's calming down. She's doing her thing. I think we're gonna, let's do these leaves and then we'll decide whether or not we want to add any additional um, metallic in there. I, I don't know yet whether or not I want to. We're gonna add just some real simple stitches. I'm gonna use three, three wide for this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Do, do, do. And okay, one, two, three. Beauteous. Grab a needle. Oh. Okay, there we go. I'll tie a little knot. Perfect. Hey, Belle. Go get me another toy. I know. Go get me a toy. Go get me a toy. Okay, so we're going to just start stitching over here before Ellie comes back with another toy. Because she might. She might She might want me to play with her. And right now, I would like some mommy time to just be able to stitch. So we'll see. And trust me, I have played with her today. Don't think I haven't because I definitely have. <laughs> We always, if you've seen any of my vlogs, you know, we go outside and I'll play, play frisbee or ball with her and we spend a lot of time. She needs it. She's a lab. She's got to be able to run and have that energy and that free time to play. She's very smart. So she knows how to uh, bring me certain objects. She will like search and find. She would have been a great working dog, honestly. She's just so smart. I just... For days, I just can't get over how smart she really is. Um, she's pretty protective, so the best you're going to see her is probably on camera here. She doesn't do well in person because we got her just before COVID and everything shut down during the peak time when we when we needed to be socializing her. And so she's very scared of people. She's very hesitant, and she's pretty protective of me because, you know, we're together all day, every day. And during COVID, I, I didn't feel great. So she, she grew up, you know, she, she learned that, you know, we're, we're buddies and the few people that she met during COVID, she absolutely loves, like she will roll on her belly and like show tummy and she will just be the biggest cuddle bug. But if you're not one of those, like, I don't know, seven, eight people, she is just not, She's just not feeling it. She's just, so we tend to keep her away from people just to keep her safe and keep everybody comfortable. Um, but you'll see her on camera. She's, she's a good girl. She just has a lot of energy that needs, uh, that needs attention, which is good. I'm okay with that. We've got lots of toys and ways that we can keep her mentally stimulated. She's, she said, you hear the word toys. What's up, Bubba? something behind there you're gonna be okay can you go get me another toy get me get me frisbee do you know where frisbee is can you get me frisbee you're gonna be okay i think we're gonna add in let's do this one down here 
two, one, and I think there's some FOD behind something that she can't quite reach and she knows it's there. I might have to go get it for her. Let's see if I can just get through, buddy. I'm gonna get through this, this section, okay? And then I'll help you out. I know, I know the world feels like it's ending because you can't find that one piece of dog food. But you're gonna be okay and I'm gonna help you in just a minute, okay? Good girl. Anyone else have? Tell me about your, your fur babies. I have two cats and a dog. Clearly, Ellie, you know, you can hear from her pretty, pretty frequently here. She's got some, she's got some energy. Okay. Might be a little close to the edge on this one, but I'm feeling okay about it. I don't love that this is kind of connected, but I think we'll be okay. And I think we'll put a couple over here as well. So let me tie this off and then I'm going to pause for a second just to go get Ellie her, what's bothering her. Okay, let me go take care of Ellie. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, I'm back. I gave Ellie a little something that she can chew on to get some of her energy out. So hopefully, hopefully that'll help her. I think it helps with her anxiety too. I'm not like a dog trainer, you know, per se, but... I think if she has like an hour of like chew time a night, she tends to settle down in the evening. So we do a lot of our playtime like in the morning and midday. In the evening, I kind of try to slow her down a little bit, but having a chew toy or something in the evening definitely, like a chew bone, definitely helps. I'm going to just adjust back a little because sometimes as I get tired, I, I tend to pull my project closer and I want you to be able to see what I'm working on. Okay, so... I'm gonna put in just a couple of leaves here because I think they'll look nice. Nothing too big because I can't get too close to that edge. I'll just put in a little one. One. If you hear Ellie in the background, <laughs> she's goofing around with her, with the bone I gave her. Okay, good. Nice. I might put another little wing on it because I think it'll look cuter. I know it doesn't quite follow the theme, but that's okay. Sometimes you just have to make creative decisions. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And I'm gonna tie that off a little bit. Tonight we have, so we follow a local soccer team. They are, it's MASL, Major Arena Soccer League. And they, their game is streaming tonight. So later tonight, we're going to, Nick and I are going to watch that game. They're doing pretty well. They lost their last game, but you know what? That happens. And I, so Nick and I met actually. So I met my husband playing soccer. So we both played. I thought it was a good way when I came back from college and was ready to kind of start meeting people in the community again. I went to college a couple hours away. So a lot of people that I knew from high school had moved away or had, you know, uh, they had other things going on. Well, I thought that it would be a good way to meet people rather than just like going out to bars or wherever else so I I played soccer in high school and I was decent I'm not saying I was good um, but I was I could keep up and I played co-ed before I was used to playing with the boys I've always kind of had a little bit more strength to me so I can keep up with the guys and well eventually I met I joined a, like a local rec team you know chill chill rec team and eventually my husband played a little bit more competitively but I we, we met 
playing soccer. So that's kind of funny. We actually met on a snowstormy night of all things and me being the cool <laughs> person that I am, uh, I hadn't met him yet. So I was playing on a different team and I was leaving my game and he was coming in and it was, I mean, when I say it was like blizzarding y'all, it was like whiteout conditions. It was hard to drive. It was dark. It was late at night and it was just snowy and my car was covered with snow. And so if you're from a snowy climate, you know, usually you leave like a snow brush in the car and a scrapers because you got to defrost your car, get all the ice and the snow off. Well, something I hadn't been doing was taking my windshield wipers and lifting them off of the windshield so they didn't freeze the windshield. I had never heard of that, but my well, now husband at the time he was lifting his windshield wipers off of his car and being the smooth talker I was I was like wow that's that's a really great idea because I was like okay well this is a guy you know I can you know it's a way to say hello and also it really was a smart idea and he was so focused on the game his game coming up that you know he you know, he didn't say too much. He was probably polite and wished that I was like, you know, you know, safe driving or something. But yeah, my opening line was about windshield wipers, friends. So if you're ever embarrassed about how you met your significant other, don't worry. At least your opening line wasn't about windshield wipers. Um, but it worked out. We're married now and things are good. We've got, you know, we, <laughs> we can endure the storms together. He can, uh, it's good, but we watch soccer now and we're both kind of I'm going to say retired. We never played professionally, but, uh, you know, one too many surgeries and uh, you kind of wrap things up. Okay, I think we're going to put in one more down here because I don't really want to do any more rosettes tonight. So we're going to we're going to put in just a little leafy thing down here and then we'll just fill in a couple French knots to kind of round out the design. You know, you ever just get kind of tired of certain stitches? I like rosettes, but I'm just I'm just not in the mood right now to make one. If you want to add in a little rosette over here, by all means, I say you go for it. I'm going to just kind of fill in the space with easy stitches right now, though. This just feels good. And I think when you're working on a craftsy project, it should just, it should just feel good. And it should be relaxing and unwinding. That's why I like working on these projects, you know, at the end of a long week or at the end of a long day. It kind of gives me a project I can focus on and control, and it's a little bit more relaxing. And we'll put in one more stitch right here. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's looking nice. Okay, let's put in some French knots with our little gray color that we like. I'm going to have to get more of that color because I think I'm running low. I really like it. It's a really pretty color. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna just put in a couple of these throughout. Okay, I'm gonna use three strands again for my French knots. Strand is probably too long, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab my needle. Hey, buddy. You're back again. I know, you're so smart. You didn't forget about the thing that I can't reach behind the other thing. I'm gonna need your dad to help me move the furniture to get whatever it is you need, but we can't do it right now. We can do it in a little bit. I'll ask him to help me move the furniture for you because I know you're you're not going to forget that there's something back there that you really want. Okay. All right, friends, are we having fun with this project? Are we getting things done? How are you feeling like relaxed, productive? Like how are we, what's the vibe? How are we, how are we doing? Hopefully we're doing pretty good. I'm just going to add in a couple knots. One, two, three. And... Do one, two, three. Oh boy, Ellie is back by my light. Yep, we lost our light again. Okay, please hold, please hold. 
you know what, we're just going to keep it like that because I think she's going to keep unplugging it and that's, that's okay. You can actually probably see the colors okay from here. So we'll keep it just like that. It's a little tough for me to see because it's, I don't have great light in this room, but it's actually showing up on camera okay. So, and that's what's important. We don't have a ton of time left in this project anyway. It's okay. We're almost done. So we're gonna add in our little gray. I can drop, I'll put the colors, I'll take note of what colors I used. So if y'all want to see what color um, floss and kind of do something similar, I'll put it in the description so that you know which flosses I used for this project. And the felt, I mean, this is just a generic felt. It's like a creamy color. It's not anything super fancy. This one's a wool felt from a local fabric shop. That's pretty cool. They have these hand dyed like wool felts. They're really, really pretty. But for this project, I thought we would keep it simple. Okay. There's another little three berries. One, two, three. Ellie Mae! I'm making French knots, baby girl. I need my hands. Okay. Little French knotties. We'll put a couple more right over here. Oh, you know what? We're going to tie that off because that's going to pull all the way across and we don't want to do that. are getting a little tired losing concentration I think sometimes you got to kind of do stitching in bite size bite size intervals so. you know you'd think by now I stitch so much that it wouldn't <laughs> tired of stitching but sometimes after all like a really long day my I do my arms get tired especially since I'm a long arm quilter so when I'm quilting on my long arm my arms are kind of they're out they're not like resting at my sides my arms are out and believe it or not after six hours of that or seven you know five to seven hours of that your arms do get a little tired I didn't long arm today but it's been a long week and I don't know if it's like the winter where you just, I feel like my body just needs more rest. You know what I mean? Does anyone else, is that a vibe for anyone else? Just me. Okay, I'll put in a couple stitches here. Two, a couple little ones. Uh, doing two loops on those. You can do them all to match if you like. I'm just kind of squeezing things throughout here. Um, I want another little guy. Let's do, we'll do three on this one. One, two, three. Make sure that's all the way down, y'all. The knots come out weird. And I think we just need a couple up here and we're done with those. Okay, so are we happy with this coloring? Now that you can kind of, I don't know why, the light is so good for you and for me. It's like so dark in here, but you can see the color a little bit more true to how I'm seeing it right now, which is kind of cool. Um, what do you think? Do we, I'll show you in a second. I was going to say, do we need to add in the metallic or on the daisies? What do you think? Add in metallic on the daisies or just do we like them kind of neutral? I think we kind of like them neutral. I think we're actually going to just roll with this wave. What I am going to show you, I've got to go run and grab it, but I'm going to put down a stabilizing paper. So let me tie this knot off and then I'm going to go run and grab it and I'll show you. So I want to cover up this back because I imagine, so when you're using these, you're going to be, they're going to be rolling onto a page and you don't want the page getting caught on any 
of these threads. So we're gonna kind of seal them up a little bit before we, you know, finish binding it up. So let me go grab the paper that we're gonna use. And I'll try to make sure, I think it's an old roll, but if I've got the name, I'll go try to find it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back. I grabbed this roll. It's just a peel and stick stabilizer. So it is fairly thick. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know the brand. I wanna say I got it from Marathon, like the Marathon pen. Is that what it's called, Marathon? I got this over a decade ago at a quilt show with my mom. I was working on art quilts. And I wanna say I got it from the Marathon booth. But it's just a peel and stick stabilizer. I'm sure you could find a similar one. It probably won't be on a roll. It'll probably be in plastic sheets, but it's just a peel and stick. I'll try to pull up the corner. It's just a peel and stick stabilizer. That's it, it's just a peel and stick. So basically what we're gonna do is, I also have paper scissors. I'm gonna just cut a section of this and then it, I'm not even gonna like, you could theoretically measure this out. You could put this on a cutting table, which is upstairs. We're not gonna fuss with it that hard. I'm gonna cut it out kind of too big and then we're gonna cut it to size. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So I know we've got a bit of a mess here. We'll clean up in a second, but this is our roll. I'm just, so I know that this is about this big. I'm just gonna cut, not cut into my microphone. I'm just gonna cut just a little bit too big. We're not gonna cut the work that we just did. And we're just gonna cut across it. Why? Because it's a Sunday and our project doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfection today. If I was doing this in mass production, I would be cutting these out on my cutting board upstairs. I even have a rotary cutter that is just for paper, but we're, we're not doing that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not vibing it right now. We are just gonna keep this project simple. Then I would be cutting these with a lot more care uh, using my cutting board and a rotary cutter, but I'm not gonna worry about it. And then, so this is the sticky side. I'm gonna lay it right on there. You can see now all of our stitching is covered, which is great. I didn't add it beforehand because obviously I want the stitches covered and I also want, it would have been an extra layer to stick through or to stitch through, which we don't want. And then I'm just cutting away with, again, my paper scissors. Don't do this with your fabric scissors. You'll be very sad. Use your paper scissors to cut the extra, okay? And if there's like a little bit on the edge, just trim that right off so that it's nice and clean cut. There we go. All right, beautiful. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, so this is going to be over here, okay. Now there isn't a front or back, but basically you're gonna put these two pieces together and we are gonna stitch around the edges. So let's see. For me, starting is always the hard part and what color we wanna bind with. So let's choose, this is Acru. Acru is really pretty. Let's do, yeah, I think Acru is gonna look nice. I kinda want it to match, uh, match our border here. So let's see. I probably don't need to use all six strands, but let's use, we used six for this, didn't we? <laughs> let's use three because honestly, we're gonna be going through so many layers that it's just gonna be a little bit easier with the paper there to pull three strands through than it is going to be six. And I think the three will be plenty strong, like a three ply thread we're gonna be good to go. Two, one more is three. Okay, so we'll recombine these. Two, three. Nothing wrong with a needle threader, I just, I get impatient. I just like kind of getting going on my project and it feels like an extra step. Okay, so. There we go. I'm gonna tie off a little knot, but don't worry, this knot's gonna be on the inside. No one's gonna see it. This tail again is a little long. I want it a little bit shorter, so it's a little bit more refined. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna come up 
like a stitch length in. Okay, and if I need to trim that out later, I can. But you're gonna keep these two layers aligned, okay, as we're going. And let's see. Okay, so you're gonna stitch all the way across, grab this loop. This is how I do it. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but this is how I do it. Okay, so now we've gotten started. So I stitched all the way across and I came back up through the center so that theoretically we can be holding those. Now from the back side, you kinda wanna make sure that your stitches are gonna be parallel right across, right? So you wanna kinda keep the same length on your stitches. So I went all the way through, that's through both layers. I'm gonna use my needle to pick up that strand and I'm gonna pull in the direction of that stitch, okay? So like perpendicular to this line. I'm gonna pull straight out and that's gonna keep everything nice and square for me, okay? I'm gonna come up from the back side again. One stitch length away, you can see I'm trying to keep the stitches kind of even and they are perpendicular to the side, to the edge that we're on. We're again going to go through that loop and pull like straight out. It's gonna keep everything nice and neat and tidy for you. I swear getting started on this stitch is the hardest part and then once you get going, it's really not bad. Okay, so again, let's take another one. Okay, right here. So we're gonna pull. You can see my loop. I'm just going to go through the center of the loop with my needle and I'm going to pull right out. There we go. Just to keep everything nice. Okay. Nope, nope. Didn't do something right. Something is not correct. Please hold, please hold. If in doubt, back it out. There you go. Friends, it's gonna happen sometimes when you're stitching, something's gonna kinda go, things can kinda get unexpected and that's okay. Okay, so here's our loop. We see our loop. We're gonna put our needle through the loop and straight back out. You can see this one got pulled kind of weird. That's okay, don't worry about it. We're gonna just pull it a little bit there we go. And it's going to straighten right back. If you need to do that a couple times and loosen things up, go out, feel free, go right ahead. I encourage it. So we can loosen up while we're still here. Just kind of pull at these strings a little. Yeah, see, that's good slack. And what we're going to do is actually pull this one so that that stitch comes straight. And then we'll pull at this one so that the stitch comes straight. Okay, keep your triangles nice and square so that they are aligned. This will get even better as you get going, but it is important. Granted, there's a chance I didn't cut these particularly straight. I'm not the best at cutting, but I think we'll be okay. I might add another little, another little stitch at the end there, but for right now, I'm happy. We'll keep going and we'll see how far we get. Okay. Okay. Another stitch up. And we're gonna go through the loop. There you go. Very nice. It's very nice. And kind of going this way. Okay. You can see like a nice line is starting to form there on the edge, binding these nicely together. Okay. 
So tell me, friends, what are your favorite snowy day memories? Do you have favorite snowy day memories? Did you bake cookies? Did you go build a snowman? Did you hang out inside and watch The Price is Right that always came on midday that we didn't get to watch because we were in school? Did you go out sledding? Have a snowball fight with the neighborhood? What'd you do? Tell me about, tell me about your experience with snowy days. Or is snow not something that you grew up with? Snow not really your, your cup of tea? I know it's not, I know it's not in everyone's. Uh, we're gonna, ch -ch 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 -ch. yeah, I'm gonna do another little stitch here, even if it's a little bit too close, because I really want this corner to stay, stay on point here for us, okay? So we're gonna turn the corner. I'm gonna do a little stitch right here and I almost want to go to the corner but we'll we'll come back here we'll see we'll see how this goes if we need to adjust we will I don't hate that okay I don't hate that it's a little smushy I think part of me I'm wondering if we I might actually do one at the corner and then come back the other way. So I really want that to just stay down. I think you can decide here. If you want to go at a diagonal, you can. If you want to just turn the corner, you can. I'm going to do one real close to the edge. Just to really lock in this side. And then I'm going to turn the corner is what... Because I want my corner to be just a little bit crisper on this one. Than some of the ones I've done... Uh, in the past, so let's, it's caught on this corner, please. You ever start bargaining with your <laughs> craft supplies? There we go. Okay. That's the spot. Okay. And now we're going to bind just like here. Yeah, I think I like this better. Mm, that didn't come out right on the back, though. What did we do? What did we do, friend? Oh, I see. Okay, that's okay. I knew. I knew. If you're not into this hand stitching part, you can you can machine sew the edges as well. It's not a big deal. It's just a matter of preference on how you want the project to kind of look and work when you're all done. Okay, we're gonna grab from here. I need to make sure this stitch is up. So I'm basically making sure that this corner is up a bit. Yeah, like that. And it's not gonna be perfect. It's still gonna be a little smushed, but that's okay. The back's gonna look a little. It's gonna look like it has a couple extra stitches, but that's okay. That's why we're using the same color. I'd rather that it held than not held, so that's where we're at. Okay. And now, ooh, where are we? Okay, there we go. Nice clean loop. And now we're on a straightaway again. Straightways are a little bit easier than corners. Obviously. So friends, as we're wrapping up this project, let me know if there's a project you want to see or what you want to see next. I'm thinking of doing some stitch and, stick and stitch projects. I'm thinking of doing some, maybe like one of those like monthly temperature, like, you know, like the daily temperature throughout the year, like a fun design with that. Do we like florals? Do we want to learn how to stitch something else? Is there something you've always wanted to embroider that you want to learn about? Let me know. So I'd love to just take an hour or two each Sunday and just sit and stitch with you and hang out and work on a project. So let me know what it is you want to learn. What What's interesting you about, about embroidery? And if it's snowing there, <laughs> let me know because it's definitely snowing here. It's definitely snowing here. Okay. 
and I could leave these corners up, but I kind of, I want to get a little bit closer. I think we need at least one more stitch in here. Yeah. And there we go. Okay. That's not bad. That's a little bit better. And to finish it off, we could, I don't really want a knot on the back. I think we're going to try to finish it from the underside. Okay. So I'm going to come in. So I'm going to come into the pocket a little bit. Let me, I kind of want to anchor this so it doesn't move. Just take, yeah, one extra stitch there. Beautiful. And then let's see how we can anchor it from the inside. Was there a way I can just stitch down? Yeah, let's go in through the seam. Okay. And then I will tie a little knot on the inside close to that border. So the way I'm going to do that is you can see I've got like a little knot right here. Then I'm going to just I put my needle through the knot. I'm going to place my needle on the fabric. And then I'm going to use the little tail to just guide it down and inside. Okay. And let's do that again. So we're going to tie a little knot like this, a loose knot. And I'm going to take my needle, put it through the center of that knot. And just pick a spot inside here that we want that to really just go down and kind of get hidden in there. Okay. It's kind of on the edge, but that's okay. I don't mind that. These guys we're going to trim. We don't need to see that. Okay. So that's our little bookmark. Do we want to test it? Do we want to make sure it kind of works? Let me go grab a book. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. I grabbed a book. Uh, this is one of my original Harry Potter books, but yeah, so we're going to just look at that, just slide that right over the corner. The thing about this style of bookmark is that you are going to have a gap at the edge, primarily because of the stitching. So the book won't be able to go past your row of stitches. So however long you make your stitches, that's basically going to be where the book edge is going to end. But yeah, that'll totally hold a space. No big deal. No problem. You can kind of see where it is. Open it right up and it's soft. It smoothly went on too. So even if I wanted to just do, I guess I could just do a single page. Yeah, it's nice. What's nice about that too is again, the stitches are covered. You see that with the paper, so you don't have to worry about it. Thank you so much for stitching along with me, friends. I had a great time stitching up our little project together. If there are more projects you want to work on next weekend or throughout the month or this year, let me know. I want to hear what kind of projects you want to try. This was a fun one. If you want to try it in different colors or with like different patterns. Again, in the past, I've done the bumblebees. So if you want to learn how to make the cute little bumblebee and we can doll it up more than this guy, you know, we can add in the little extras. Um, let me know. Let me know what you'd like to learn next. So I can't wait to catch up with you next week and we'll work on another project together. And I hope that you stay warm and cozy and happy stitching friends.